Next generation weather forecast, Jerry Shack here from patreon.com slash stormchaser JS. Today's video is going to go on YouTube because it could be quite lengthy and we have a lot to cover and I think we have an historic situation on our hands. So I want everyone to see what we're doing and also this is going to be a little bit of a advertising thing for my Patreon page. So looking at things this morning, as I've just started this video, the National Hurricane Center has named Tropical Depression 13. Now Tropical Storm Water just, just came in as I upload the page. So my intensity here uh, may be a little bit underdone. Let me see on my piece of paper what I have this thing as. So I have this thing going in at 35 miles an hour, so it's 45 miles an hour, but that's not going to really be a big deal in the short term. And you'll see that intensity track as we get towards the end of this video. But we have, again, two systems. Both of them will end up in the Gulf of Mexico and possibly landfall two in a row in some of the same areas. So again, this is a very, very unusual and potentially historic situation unfolding here. So again, Laura, which was pre-TD13, then Tropical Depression 14 here. So this one here, 14, will become Marco over the next few days, and maybe possibly even today, given how quickly uh, Laura has gotten herself a name. So again, very, very unusual situation unfolding here. So let's take a look here at the Climate Prediction Center of the Madden Julian Oscillation here, the MJO. You can see where the MJO is now in Phase 8, going into Phase 1, and then Phases 2 and 3. Down the road as we get into September, but being in phase eight and one is a huge key, huge, because here we are in phase eight and one, and you can see phase eight and one favors the Gulf of Mexico for landfalls. So that is just a perfect, perfect correlation with the MGO and tropical storm, tropical cyclone tracks and intensity. I mean, that could not be any better. We've done this. We did this with East East a few weeks ago with phase four. So these MJO rotations can really be a great key to the game and telling where to look for tropical trouble. So that is another verification, which is going to work out quite nicely. So let's take a look at some of the model guidance. We're going to start with, again, uh, Laura, which is now, uh, Laura, you can see the European Ensemble taking it up here into the Gulf of Mexico. Then New Orleans, it's going to be a very, very close call for South Florida. There's uh, the tracks, again, from the European the 60 GFS Ensemble here is on the right. You can see what that looks like here. These are the out through five days. Here's a close-in view. Here's the UK Met. Uh, very, very bullish on a central Gulf Coast hit. Here is the in-close of the UK Met a little further south of Florida, but more of a Cuba, which would delay its strengthening, which could be or not be a good thing, given that both, you know, all three of these models, the GFS, the European, and the UK Met, all ramp this thing up in the Gulf of Mexico, which is a very, very big concern of mine. Huge, huge concern, uh, given the water temperatures that we have in there, which I'll pull up also in just a minute. So that was TD13, which is now currently Laura. Let me go back over here, and we'll talk about number 14, which is southeast of the Yucatan. So same thing here is the European Ensemble, bringing it north-northwest. Here is the GFS Ensemble, looking like that. Here's the in close, not much change. And then there's the UK Met. So this is a really, really big concern that we may have two powerful tropical cyclones landfalling possibly almost at the same time or a day within of each other within 24 hours. That is just incredible to think of a possibility like that happening. So while I'm on here, let me pull up my Reynolds SSTs. And I got to tell you, this is pretty impressive. Here are the current SSTs. You can see pretty much mid and upper 80s in the Gulf of Mexico, just outrageously warm. The anomalies look like this over the last several days. You can see very, very warm in the Gulf of Mexico. I'll stop it at the current date here. Uh, this is updated uh, uh, the 19th. You can see the Gulf of Mexico, one to two Celsius above normal. So plenty of fuel for these to get going. Also, what I want to have up here as well is the maximum potential energy for hurricanes, the MPI, which is a very, very good tool to be using. So I'll bring this over here in my tab grouping and we can focus on the Gulf of Mexico. This updates daily. And I got to tell you, th this is probably as concerning as it can be. You can see the Gulf of Mexico can support a Category 5, a very intense Category 5 hurricane uh, if everything is favorable. And it looks like things will be favorable. So that cannot be ruled out that we're talking easily a major, if not a Category 4 or 5 by early next week with both of these systems coming in there. Now, the thing is, when you have two systems coming in like this, could one take over each other? And that's very, very possible. I think that's what the UK Met is showing here 
in particular for what is now Tropical Storm Laura. Let me go back over here to the AL13 page. You can see that the UK Met particularly showing some very, very strong members going in there. Uh, and maybe the UK Met seeing TV14's energy being absorbed into what is now Laura. So that's going to be an interesting piece of the puzzle going forward. Or, or maybe it could be going the other way. Does Laura's energy go into TV14? So that's going to be something we're going to have to watch over the days. But regardless, the Gulf has plenty of energy to support a violent tropical cyclone in there as uh, one of these systems, possibly if not both of them, get in. Um, we not, definitely know both of them are going to get in there. But which could one of them take and uh, knock each other, knock one of each other's out? So. Will Laura be stronger or TD14 be stronger or will they both be stronger if they remain far enough apart? That's going to be an interesting part of the forecast going down the road. But you only need one. We don't need two majors in the Gulf of Mexico. So that's going to be a really interesting to watch that evolution over the next couple of days. So you can see what the temperatures look like there. Now moving on to the European Ensemble probabilities. You can see going through 72 hours, very, very high probabilities, 100% for both of these systems. Going out to next Tuesday, this loads in. You can see here's Laura, here's TD14. You can see how they both consolidate in the central Gulf of Mexico. This is next Monday night. Here's next Tuesday. Looks like TD14 is coming into New Orleans, and Laura is coming uh, southwest of Florida. So there goes Laura, and then there goes uh, TD13, and then comes Laura. So possibly double landfall near New Orleans towards the middle of next week. So a very, very disconcerting situation. Then they'll both get lifted up into the Westerlies and produce some heavy rain and some severe weather over the southeast part of the United States towards the middle and end the next week. So a very, very dangerous situation, unfortunately, folding out for the central Gulf of Mexico states as we get into early next week. So with all that said and all that guidance, I'm going to go over here to my Patreon page and I'll show you what I have for my track for both of these systems. Again, intensity forecasting here. It is really shaky. I have very, very low confidence in these intensity forecasts. But anyway, here is what I have on the post. Let me just try to make this bigger here. You can see what I'm doing here is TD13, which is now Laura. But again, by the way, you can see I had this at 35. I'm a little bit too weak with the intensity. But the overall track will be moving west-northwest. Very, very close to Hispaniola. We'll have to see how much land interaction here happens. That's going to be another wild card with intensity. Land interaction, then possibly some more land interaction here with Cuba, whether it should be going over Cuba or whether it's going to be remaining just to the north of Cuba. It's going to be a big card for intensity. Now, if it can remain north of Cuba, this is going to ramp up quickly. And, um, and maybe it's a 90 mile per hour hurricane coming into the Keys on Monday. Maybe it's 130 uh, west of Florida Tuesday. And then here's TD14, as you can see. Remaining it weak and then bringing it over the Yucatan, which is quite likely, so that will weaken it, whatever it can get to over the next day or so. And then the threat of re-strengthening here, but we'll have to see how strong Laura is at this time as well. So these are going to be very dependent on each other, their strength and their track. So it's a very, very shaky forecast, but again, I'm highlighting the area of landfall of both of these, either in, I don't think, I don't think a Laura is going to get all the way over to Texas, probably what more what's going to happen is, TD14 is going to be probably very close to Louisiana. So the state of Louisiana, I'm particularly worried about for both of these and possibly maybe TD14 if it remains weak enough, heads into Texas. But Louisiana really got to pay attention, especially for Laura. So it's certainly not impossible for both of these to come in at the same location within 24 hours. So a really, really dangerous situation could be unfolding here in Louisiana as we get into early next week. So that's it for now, and thank you for watching.